everyone welcome to another civil 3d earthworks episode so on today's episode i am going to take you guys through a basic road um design modeling so we all know that before we start any design we are governed by a certain specs and standards that we need to follow depending on where you are doing your design so for example, if you are designing a national road, a national road won't be governed by the same sets of standards and specification as a residential road. So before you start any design, please, please, please familiarize yourself with the sets of standards and specification that you have to follow for that specific road that you are designing. The concept that I'm going to show you, it will be the same, but obviously, um, your design speed will differ depending on which um, road you are designing for. Um, your curve length will differ. So you must just look at the spec of the area that you are designing for. But otherwise you can implement the same principle that I'm going to show you on Civil 3D. So the first thing that you are going to do, you are going to need to know your um the width of your road is it going to be a six meter wide road is it going to have a carry a carriage of about a meter um you must just know what kind of a road you you are designing the width of your road um you must also know uh the kilometer of your road where is it starting where is it en ending will there be any intersections in between so an intersection it's a whole series on um, a whole episode on its own so today i will just focus on the road itself so the first thing that you are going to do uh you are going to go under the home tab come under the assembly as and say create assembly so basically an assembly it's like your the center line of your road so I'm just going to call it assembly road and I'm going to say OK. Then it asks you specify the location where you want to place it. I'm just going to put it there. So basically, this is our road center line. You go back under your home tab. You come here under tool palettes. You will see that something like this will appear. The first thing that we want to do is to put our lanes first. So I normally just use the lane super elevation AOR. What I like about this is that you can, if you click on it, you the parameters that it has, you can put your own road parameters. So let's say, for example, we want a width of, let's say, five meters, for example. And then it says that which side is it on? It's we're going to start on the right hand side let's say we want a width of five meters and we want the default um slope let's leave it at two percent and then um obviously every time we know that before we start a project the geotech um, engineers have to go on site and take different test pits so that we know that um the land that we are building on um we are able to meet the kpas that um the the soil has to the bearing capacity that we want the soil to be able to carry for us and as soon as you have read your 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 geotech report you now come and do your pavement design pavement design again it's a set of standards and specifications that we have to follow so in when you are designing a road your pavement design will be influenced by things like your your traffic count like um the 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 type of, of vehicles that will be using that road and how many vehicles that will be using that road. So obviously we know we all know that there are such things as peak hours, those are the ones that you have to use to get more accurate results. So yes, um based on all those conditions in terms of the weather and all of that, then you will be knowing what kind of and also the design life of the road. Then you will be knowing what kind of um pavement design you need to have. So where it says uh, pave one depth, pave two depth. These normally we call them your sub base, your sub selected, your you know your sub grade, and all of that. So you just come here. Let's say everything of yours um it's hundred and fifty mils. So you just come in and um in give those inputs to say everything is hundred and fifty mils. Remember, I work in millimeters, so that's why you will see 
everything of mine it's in i work in meters so everything is in meters and then you come to the right hand side and you just put it there so that is our five meter um wide right hand side road that is sloping at two percent slope so you just come and you change it to left and then you go to the left hand side you put it there so now we have a road that is crowned so this is our center line and then it slopes to both sides at two percent uh, we all know again that um depending again on the type of road that you're designing for there will be some that will have your curbs and then there will be some that will not have curbs and from here they will dilate straight back into the surface so let's just say from here you want to put curbs for example so you, you come under the curbs tab and it, it has different types that you can put there uh, let's just choose the first one that says urban uh, again, it's the same thing. It asks you um, which side and the depth of the curb and all of that. You can always, um, you know, you can always put your parameters there. So we're going to put one on the right and the left hand side. So as soon as we, we've put on our curbs, we come back and we say we want it to, um, to, to go to the generic one. We want it to daylight day back into the ngl so this is where your cut and fill slopes come in so we're just gonna say we want to link slope to surface again it's it, it's asking you which side do you want to do this and by how how much percentage i normally just like 50 percent so i come and i click here on the right there's my 50 percent slope and then i'm gonna go the left remember Again, it's about what your, your spec says and what the client also prefers. And then what we call a road assembly. So we now have our assembly, which follows. It's basically the, the road that we want to put or we want to design for. So this is our spec. As soon as you're done with your assembly, um, you will come and you draw a polyline from the starting point to the end point of where they wanted the road to be. So under the home tab again you come under draw and then there will be polyline you just click on it. Let's say they wanted the road to start here and have a corner there and end there for example. So you first draw this polyline and then you come again under the home tab under create design base alignment you just drop down on this alignment tab and then you say create alignment from objects you click on the polyline you say enter so basically this arrow it's just at your alignment direction if it's saying it's going there it means you're zero it's on the western side and then you're you, you, it's ending there on the northern side so you just say enter if that's what you want you can give your alignment a name let's call it a the important one on on, on, on this page is the one that says earth curves between tangents so obviously we know that when we do um when we drive on a road we don't drive at a 90 degree turn for example we drive at a curve so here it's asking you that you want to make a default and add um, curves on your alignment. So depending on um, your specs, it will tell you that uh, a minimum curve must be this much and maximum must be this much. So let's say in our case, we just want it to be 160 meters. You will put there where it says default radius. We make it 160 and we say, okay, you will see that now we have that 160 um, curve there. And then as soon as you have put on your alignment, you go to your profile. So this is what I call the horizontal um, property. You go under your profile, you drop down and again and say create surface profile. So as soon as you said create surface profile, you want to see your vertical um, profile vertical alignment so you're going to choose your alignment your horizontal one and then under select surface you want to see how the ground is sloping you say draw in profile view so you just say create profile view because basically we just want to see what the 
um, vertical alignment looks like so I am just going under edit profile view style because I can't exactly see this um, exaggeration it says it's at five meter exaggeration you say okay I wanted it to be at five meter exaggeration just so that I can see it properly so this is how the vertical um, profile looks like and then as soon as you can see now how the ground looks like you come and um, you come under profile and you say pr create profile creation tools you click on that one and then it will ask you to select the profile view where you want to create the profile you click your vertical profile and then this this is what will appear where it says you must draw new you come here and you just give it a name we'll give it road we'll say vertical alignment of a road a for example and then you just say okay and then this will appear this tab where it says profile layout tools you you drop down on the first one and you say you want to draw tangents with curves so we say okay we want to draw tangents with curve and then it will come here on the command tab and say specify start point so we are going to start at the start where the road is starting everywhere where you see a change in direction try to click on it everywhere where you see like oh okay here yeah, there's going to be a lot of filling or a lot of cutting you just try to click on it click on it and then and the same and that's now how the vertical curve we're going to look like but now we just have to fix it so that it fits switch off the snap bar we are just going to fix it so that it fits what we are trying to achieve with this road Permits. just be playing around with the curves, curves just to see that it's they're basically switching what we want to do on this road okay. so you can even drag it down if you want to you can be able to drag it down you can be able to drag it up so if you take this middle one and you drag it up, for example, you will see that it can go up or down, up or down, up or down. So that's what I am trying to do if you see me with doing all this dragging. It would have been nicer if the ground like had a serious elevation differences. That way you are going to see what is it that I'm trying to do here. Maybe I must find one that really, really have serious elevation differences so that when I click on it, you'll see how the curve looks like. But anyway, how the curve will look like, but it's fine. So let's say we want to follow the ground profile more or less, and we want the road to look like this. With your blue line is now how the road is going to look like everywhere where it's cutting. So this whole area here will be in cut and that one will be in fill. So this is what we call your vertical alignment. This is what we call your horizontal alignment. And this is what we call your assembly. So as soon as you have this three, you go under your corridor. Corridor, it's corridor. You go under your corridor and um, this page will appear. We are just going to call it CD Road A road a and then it's asking you um if you want to use an alignment and a profile or a feature line we are using alignment and a profile our alignment we called it a our profile we called it vertical va road a and then our assembly is the one that we called assembly road so for you to do a corridor you will need an alignment you will need a vertical profile and you also need an assembly your target um, surface will be your NGL and you just say OK. So this is what it's looking like. It's asking you um, your frequency. So along the tangents, I normally just put everything at one. I want it to triangulate so much close to each other that there's not much of a gap 
between um between them and then we have set the target at ngl um this is when you are doing a more complex one which maybe i will do an exercise where i show you how to target to a certain feature line and all of that so for now we are just targeting everything to ngl you say apply you rebuild the corridor and you say okay so what you're gonna see on your horizontal alignment is that we have now built a corridor that is 10 meter wide everything that is here it's following firstly your ground what well, you told it that you wanted five meter five meter to have a curb and also to daylight back to the ngl and then you also told it that that this is how you it's gonna look like in the vertical alignment so here on your horizontal alignment it, it took your your assembly and your vertical alignment and it came back and created a corridor so um you, under your prop prospector tab if you come under corridor you'll see now there is your corridor if you go under properties um and go under surfaces you can always say you want to add a, a corridor surface and then I normally like putting it at the top. I want to see the top one. You can come and say you want to see the, the, the data. You want to see subsurface or base or pavement one. I always want to see the top. And I want to add the top as my break line. And you say apply. You rebuild the corridor. Um, you'll see. I just want to remove the word surface one. And just leave it as CD corridor A. That's the name of the the surface that's gonna appear so that is our surface so obviously on the curve there's a bit of triangulation error there and there it means there are some points that are triangulating from that point to that point over there but um the reason why i came here i just wanted to show you how now the surface will show you how the road is looking so if you can see the green and the gray shows you where the cut is and where the fill is but there is our road there is our curbs because remember we chose the curbs when we were doing our, um, our assembly so this is how the road looks like so obviously when you see this i'm just gonna show you how you can quickly sort this one out you come under edit surface you drop down and say delete lines so just make sure that you only delete those lines that are triangulating wrong. Other lines here that I want to delete. Just going to come here and say delete. So there. It's triangulating not so nicely. Okay. Now this is how our road looks like. Object view. There we go. So now we can see perfectly where we're cutting, where we're filling. And basically that's how it looks like the 180 um, um, curve that we see there and then we also have vehicle tracking but I think I'll do that one on another episode for this episode I just wanted you guys to get an idea of what you need in order for you to see a corridor come alive so first thing that you need is an assembly assembly it's basically putting together what is it that you want to see uh, and then you will need your vertical profile and your horizontal which is where exactly are you putting this road and as soon as you have those three voila um, I hope this short video will be able to help you to put together your little corridor and be able to see it. And yeah, thank you so much for always tuning in. And thank you for your comments. Please, please, please subscribe and also comment and ask questions and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much. Bye.